And by not feeding, they just try not to die to the, the cavalcade of humans on the bottom side of the map. But let's hop into Champion Select. NALCS are going to be on our red side, and the LPL representing Team Ice going to be on the purple side. Oh, well, the blue side. <laughs> just confusing when it's fire and ice, guys. It, it is, but you know, one thing that's going to be less confusing, there's going to be a heavy presence towards mid lane. We've seen it in every single game, and now there have been questions about Bjergsen in the last couple of games. He's been looking a little, uh, you know, on the back foot compared to what we've seen him in the regular split and, you know, in other international competitions. So he's got to deal with Wayless, who yeah, has the been same mid better from the last game. He lost the 1v1 against Clear Love as well. And if we're talking about people that were underperforming, and I love jumping to conclusions at best. <laughs> <laughs> once as yes, well, please. but Rainover has looked awful in the jungle. His two Rengar, his tank Rengar games, when everyone else who wants to have fun is building damage oh, Rengar because is the one better. that was having fun building damage Rengar. Yeah, he actually did that against the GPL All-Stars. So uh, we'll see what they end up doing. I'm hoping to see something different from Rainover if I want Fire to win. Well, <laughs> you do. If I want Fire to win. <laughs> This is a, 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 a non-biased professional yeah. cast atlas. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, chat. Sorry, I forgot about that. I don't know how I did. Just ridiculous. <laughs> but Poppy Zara are going to be the first bands here from the NALCS. And like you were saying, Stress, a couple of mid lane bands coming through for the LPL. Syndra still lurking as far as that champion that probably wants to be snapped up relatively early. Eve is going to be the final ban. So Clear Love gets some respect. Yes, yeah, some respect given over now. We're in a situation where Syndra, Lee Sin, both available. Both have been highly banned out this tournament. The Nautilus is there for first rotation should either team want it. And, you know, we've seen Impact play a lot of the Poppy. Haven't seen him really too much on the Nautilus. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes on a first rotation. Exactly. It's only played Poppy in the two games he's played. Nautilus also pretty good flex. Expected to see the Syndra band. Otherwise, I think that would have been the first pick, but Nautilus would make the most sense if they want to pick a strong top laner who don't need no jungle ganks, <laughs> but works very well with them, by the way. Yeah. The best gank assistant. And now at this point, do we think Maus just kind of goes to Maokai and is like, okay, you're going to have to give me that, or do nah, we think yes, that... for the redemption? Because <laughs> we... once again, Maus versus Impact. That's true. Uh, I don't think he wants that 1v1 uh, at all up in the top lane. Probably going to be calling Clear Love up his side, but we know how Uzi and Mata demand a lot of presence. Uh, not a lot of bot lane yeah. presence in the draft so far, though. Yeah, definitely not. And I don't even know... Even though Mouse could trend towards Maokai, there's no need to pick it right now. It really depends how much they feel like the power picks are still on the board. Karma, a decently lane-dominant champ. Although, if they were locking this in, which they do, Aphromoo mentioned that, oh, turns out Sona beats Karma in lane yeah. uh, when he played against Albus yesterday. So we could see a return of Aphromu Sona as well, leader in the draft. Don't think they'd pick it right away. And of course, with that takeaway of the Orianna, it's locking the Karma into the bottom lane, so there's no flex picking in this game. The takeaway I like as well, getting Wayless, or at least Bjergsen off that Orianna, that was the Rengar combination that really punished Europe in the bot lane roams, so I like this takeaway. I want to say as well that this is Wayless's Orianna. This is a guy that's been playing this champion for an incredibly long time, has really interesting uh, build paths as well, like the Leandris Torment relatively early when he was playing it in the LPL. This guy, more than happy to play it at any time. But this is one thing I wanted to talk about as we hop back to the side of the NALCS. Because Bjergsen's Katarina's not banned this time. Yep. Didn't win in the Assassin Mode game, but now gets an opportunity for redemption if he'd like it. Won't, though. He just does not like it. straight onto the Cassiopeia, and there's going to be the Rek'Sai picked up for Rainover. And this is one thing that I really like, is the fact that, you know, the NALCS squad aren't just going, okay, all about the early game. We've got to get a cat and snowball. They want to get something for later in the game, just in case, because we know that historically that kind of has been a problem when facing LPL teams, is their early game tends to be incredibly strong. And if you kind of fall behind it on a snowballing champion like Cat, good luck yeah. ever catching up. Absolutely. Cassiopeia just... Generally strong, Bjergsen obviously very good at that, but oh, yeah. seeing it against Wales' Oriana is going to be pretty exciting. You're hoping uh, that we'd see the vein out of Uzi, but Uzi also wants to win lane. Uh, this is... And this is even more old smart Uzi pick. as well, picking up the Caitlyn. It was always one of the champions that he was in. most feared for. And the Rengar yeah. as well. I, I mean, like it a lot more. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say you just pick Caitlyn to win lane, but when you're as good as Uzi on Caitlyn, <laughs> you just demolish lane is the yeah. thing, because he can harass you on every CS, and he generally does. So it's not just about being able to farm safely, but just being able to heavily deny the enemy AD carry farm. Not to mention just the power of a Karma Caitlyn lane. I mean, that is super oppressive, what with all of the harassment, all of the high potential as well from the slows that are coming through from that champion. Yeah, they could do Twitch. 
if they wanted to kind of that sacrifice the lane, point. but still have the really strong team fight afterwards. Rengar, AD Rengar against Twitch, not the funnest, but <laughs> it could work. I mean, also, you're talking about sacrificing the lane. Are there many lanes that we really feel like Double Lift and Afro Move are going to be able to go like, okay, against Uzi's Caitlyn, yeah. against the Karma. Let's We've lane bully this. this yeah, let's this lane bully this. <laughs> The only uh, thing that I feel could be like more annoying would be like the old school Ezreal Sona lane, you know, where you just insta kill someone for six. And sit all the way back, potentially. And sitting all the way back is not Ezreal. Bad. Yeah, that's the thing. Bad at all. Jin is the number one pick against Caitlyn as far as people who want to pick an AD carry against it. And then Sona can also be considered one of the best ones against this. If they flex, this would be super troll and awesome, but they're most likely not going to because they still have to pick uh, their top lane. Yeah, well, once again, a flex if he's uh, hovering that. Jace has played that in a support position in the past. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Double lift oh. is gonna be in a bit of trouble with this Rengar though. Jin, as soon as he locks himself in his ultimate. Oh gosh. Oh, and now there's more dive. The this Super <laughs> Bowl delivery squad. I think you call this from Clear Love and Mouse. Yeah. If they get a combo that's good, <laughs> everyone will die. That's the yeah. problem. So NA needs to make sure they're spreading out and staying as safe as possible. But when I look at the NA squad kind of in a vacuum and, and don't really look at their opponents, I'm look, quite liking this champion select for a few different things. The Nautilus very strong in the top lane. Rek'Sai still has a lot of presence with Courage of the Colossus as well. And we've got Bjergsen on Cassiopeia. Normally that's a good sign. Normally that goes a long way, yeah. but still there's positives on both sides of this draft. Yeah, and I do actually have to point out, I've been paying a lot of attention to the NA player camps in all three of their drafts. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Doublelift has been talking the most and also gotten to pick his AD carry in the last rotation in every <laughs> yeah. draft. So he's basically just, please pick me into a good matchup. But in this one, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting lane because the Caitlyn Karma is one of the strongest lanes you can do. But technically, uh, as close as they could come to a counter pick, they tried to do so. Yeah, and look, if you're talking about Uzi being, uh, sorry, double lift being a massive carry. Uzi most certainly is as well. Now has a double shield composition mm. to try and keep him healthy. What with also having that ventral maelstrom coming out of the Maokai, if Mouse is going to be sitting back and getting that done. But ladies and gentlemen, we want you to hop onto Twitter. Use that uh, tweet at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag Firewin if you think that NALCS is going to be able to take this one, or the hashtag Icewin if you think that LPL can take this one down for our final match of the night. Remember, this is for the 100 points to get either fire or ice out of this tie that we currently have. It is all on the line moving into day number four tomorrow. And the question we've got on our minds now as we head what into the Rift Press, how is Mate taking this game? Is it going to be the Mate in uh, the regional <laughs> game yesterday that was landing hooks, beautiful combos, or the Mate that ran into tower level one? So it makes him the most dangerous <laughs> player on the planet. Yeah, you, you never can't. know. <laughs> he's dangerous for both teams. He's like, <laughs> He's much like it, it's interesting Who's he that he's playing, playing for today, Jet. It's great that he's playing Yasuo so much in one v ones as well because it's really like having a Yasuo on your team in solo queue. Exactly you right. Never really know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never thought of it that way. Kind of hurts a little bit. So we saw one of these plays yesterday pay off where you get into the tribe or surely, make sure you have the vision control, and then as they sneak forward in the lane, you cut in behind them and catch them out. Um, so we'll see if that happens again. Using his toggle button, I like it. Remember, we were talking about, you know, the extra support that uh, Uzi will have in this game, what with uh, all the movement speed and the shields that you're going to pick up from Mata. I do like having a uh, Sona there as well, Song of Celerity. Ah, underrated ability is double lift. Yeah, there it is. Basically oh, won the game already. Oh, good. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. And here's kind of the theory behind the Sona v Karma. If you're looking at the dual lanes in a totally simplistic fashion, it's like the poke ranged AD carries beat the tank AD carries, but the sustain AD carries should beat the poke AD carries, and therefore the tank AD carries should beat the sustain. But the reason that Karma, so it's just like a rock, paper, scissors type thing, yep. uh, but the reason Karma was so dominant in NA throughout most of the regular season is people were thinking that her burst was high enough that she could all in the sustain AD carries and therefore win every matchup. And sometimes that's true with the Caitlyn because you're always able to reach, but at least when Albus played it against Aphromoo, he was showing that that's not necessarily the case. So as long as they're not taking too much poke, they should hopefully be able to avoid the all-ins and out-sustain the Karma and Caitlyn. And we need to keep focus on the bottom lane as well because from the Tribush ward that the LPL squad put down, they recognized Double Lift and Aphromoo came to the lane later, indicating they were helping Rainova on red to come bottom through Krugs and look for a gank. That was pinged out. The water's gone down afterwards, so Rainova 
clearly kind of doesn't feel confident going for that early level three gank we've heard so much about, but he has just pinged on his way from a different way into the lane. Yeah. Maybe they have that idea that it was warded. Kind of the delayed level three gank. You're expecting the early two minute, 20 second cheese, but you don't quite get that. Uh, Going mid. Yeah. Going Dangerous mid. as Uzi does so much damage to double it. Doesn't use the heal just yet as Wayless gets himself out, uses the ghost, but not the flash. Just keeps himself safe, but Clear Love on the same path heading topside for impact. Look how low Mouse is though. Yeah, Mouse is in trouble, but Clear Love is here. Flashes forward, has the rep buff as well, so can slow him down. Will the dredge line come off cooldown? As impact, oh, first blood goes down, and it is going to be Clear Love that grabs it. Yeah, and honestly, pretty disrespectful by impact there to be pushed up at that stage in the game. Yes, the level three gank didn't come directly, but until you see that level three jungler for the first time, depending on your side of the map, the duo lane, for Ice, shouldn't have been pushed up. They actually technically should have died for that because Rainover should have ganked bottom off that path since they were pushed up so far. Impact was pushed up the same way. Krilov actually punished it, got the kill. Oh, double lift takes a lot of Oh, is he missing combo? Yeah, but unfortunately. Cute little exhaust Art comes out as Mata tries to get the damage down. Good block there from Afro, who is double lift taking so much damage. The autos from Uzi seem to come from such a long range. And you're against a Jin. Yep, always max range on Caitlyn, and that's some of the things that the best Caitlyns can do, is just make sure that they're kind of pole-arming you and never trading, but instead just getting damage that's off for free. That's a perfect adjective for that. I never thought of it. Pole-arming? Yeah, of course. Peacemaker is going to land on double if. Not looking all that peaceful at all, to be perfectly honest. Doesn't have heal, so really, this a is tickle risky. would kill him. Uh, especially now that they can kind of assume Clay Love is bottom side of the jungle, they don't have wards to spot him either. So this is fairly risky, but with Rain over bottom side, they should be able to scan that. Oh, Aphromoo is dropping so low off this. Yeah. If, Rain over, with death. if Rain over goes in, he has to 1v2 because Double Up <laughs> and Aphromoo can't approach. Especially not without that heal you're talking yeah. about. Like, maybe if they had that, they would think they could just about balance it, but it's still, look at the health difference already. If they even tried to trade, that would almost be suicidal. Yeah, it's gone from a gank to, well, I guess I'll be the one to pick up this experience underneath the turret. And we're gonna join him as well as Double Lift goes back, grabs himself a cull. Just feels like conceding this lane at the moment, but that's what we were talking about. I mean, this isn't actually all that bad. If they don't die, it's probably fine. Allow Bjergsen, allow Impact, try and get advantages if they can. But if we have a look at those lanes, it's very, very even. Apart from that top lane, after that first kill, Mouse able to get himself ahead by that 10 CS. Yeah, LPL technically winning these two lanes in the top and the bottom lane. Not by a huge margin, but it could definitely get a lot worse if the bottom lane trends the way it has been trending. 300 gold, not a huge deal, but Cull versus Pickaxe really speaks to double lift only wanting to sustain that lane with Aphromoo and Uzi and Mata just able to keep the pressure. And this is... This type of thing can snowball very easily if you're able to get the kills after you've gotten the large lead, get the first turret, and so on. Yeah, and a big one as well is that Clear Love has managed to make it about 600 gold in the lead over Rainover as well with that first successful gank. So this Rengar will be a problem. Now looking towards that mid lane to see what he can get done. In fact, relatively low on mana, but he's doing fine here up towards the top side of the map. Both supports have drifted up as well towards this mid lane. You can see them kind of backing and forthing over the wards in the river. Mats is going to take himself that fruit. fruit. I would argue that Aphromu securing a little bit of vision for himself may go a little bit longer. They now realize where Mata was. Aphromu doesn't get caught out in the bush by any kind of cheeky play around that tri bush as they get back into lane. But still, they maintain the CS lead for Uzi in that bottom side. And now we see these trades. When you talk about that pickaxe into the cull, double if they've got to play care play careful around this. Because as you were talking about, Uzi at max range is just punishing him every single time he's trying to come forward to last hit. Yeah, and this really hurts Rainover as well, getting the entire quadrant of your jungle stolen by clear There's not really much you can do to get back at that with the longer respawns on jungle timers. Something about this season, counter jungling much more rewarding if you're able to pull it off. Gotta go straight for a gank. Surprising, the mouse was stick still around. Yeah, well, there's the death charge. Mouse claps his hands, but that's going to spell game over. You'd expect Then the flash. Arcade smash as well, and he makes it out alive. Yeah, surprising he's still around, but he's still Maokai. Yeah. <laughs> Double Doran's health crystal. Uh, one of the best builds you can go early, absorbing the gank against the Nautilus Rek'Sai, who hadn't shopped, so not much damage actually coming through. Uh, he unfortunately had to burn his flash because he should have just backed away after seeing Rain over, knowing he'd been counter jungling. The only thing he can do is go gank, but he still gets away without a huge punch. Clear love right now, though, from the time in the jungle that he spent is almost a whole level above Rain over in experience. And since he's now past that level six mark, clear love has the opportunity. Earlier, we saw Aphromoo and Double Lift pushing up fairly heavily in the bottom lane. You can see clear love just hanging around the back of mid lane as well, looking to try and perhaps get in onto Bjergsen. 
a little tricky to go forwards if the Cassiopeia kind of knows you're coming. So we'll see how Clear Love and Wayless can utilize this Shockwave combo with the Rengar. We saw NA use its great effect on once. day one against Europe. They used such a great yeah. effect once. And then the other times it was just uh, rain over running away. But I agree with you, it has a ton of potential to work, especially on the damage Rengar as well. Uh, even if you get a little bit of tankiness, the 80 Rengar plus the two or three item Oriana later in the game, clean one shot. <laughs> it's disgusting when that starts hitting. And w when you kind of have that moment where Clear Love's no longer the ball delivery and it's all about Mao's kind of going in, that's also just a very dangerous setup. So the LPL squad have this huge wombo combo setup if they can get it a little bit later. Yeah, really nice disengage as well with all the extra movement speed that they have, what with the Inspire and with the Command Dissonance as well. It's very flexible in this composition, but they do need to get there and they do need to play well from the mid game to the late game because we saw against the LCK, it's a different story. After what was a very promising first five minutes, things went wrong. Oh, nice one! Eight, eight minutes in as Marta has to flash. Rainover doesn't get the knock up and no deadly flourish to be found from double it. Good reaction time out of yeah. Marta there. As soon as Rainover was spotted, as soon as he know, knew he was there, flashes right over the wall. Good immediate. It was a really clever move by Rainover uh, because they pinged on the control ward and those are the greatest baits to try and catch someone going <laughs> to clear it. Rainover taking the plant over the Drake wall and then immediately tunneling in afterwards. Afro's not uh, quite six yet. He can't deny this Rengar if he jumps on him. Oh dear, there he is. It's clear up jumps through. Good flash from Afro. Everyone gets out of the way of the ball of strike, but Doublelift does have to use the heal. Successful yeah. gank from Clearlove. Just the Rengar damage did 70% of his health without anyone else around. In the mid lane, there's the flash knock up Can't from flash. Rainover. Oh, doesn't actually find the stun, but Bjergsen has enough damage. That's gonna do it for Rainover. Yeah, love that gank from Cassiope, just throwing down the W as a gank. Around. They love again, though. Oh my oh, goodness, Afro moves oh. in a rough spot. The flash is nice, but Clearlop taking a lot of damage. Oh my goodness, there's a Peacemaker, and Uzi grabs himself the kill. Mouse with a bit of a delayed teleport, but to answer, Impact who gets stunned up Everyone underneath the tower. Down so here, much damage there. Rainover eventually turns up. Good shield from Mata, but he should fall down. Double if grabs kill at Clearlop. Can it's they beautiful. clean this fight up? As everyone's getting back underneath the turret, Miasma goes over to the top, and Uzi says, where did my friends go? I'm gonna die to the turret because I want it on my own terms. That's exactly what NA needed to happen. This gives Double Lift two kills. Uzi only picked up one, and they're able to get pretty much everything back. While, yes, the initial dive was successful, when they teleport in, because Wayless was off the map, having been killed early, Ice can't actually match the numbers, not to mention they can't retreat. So they're stuck in this murky middle ground where they're hoping to close in onto Double Lift, but they can't because he's staying out of Twisted Advance range. So he just gets to free hit this entire time and everyone was trying to focus impact, which just wasn't happening. And it all stems, as you were talking about, an overextension in the bottom lane, but first of all, an overextension by Wayless in mid. He thought with double summoners up, he would be okay, but he pushed the wave, didn't have a read on where Rainover was, and it punishes the LPL squad way harder than just that one kill in the middle lane would have. Yeah, and that's the trickiest thing we were talking about, laning against Cassiopeia. Even though you have Flash, it doesn't mean it'll help you in a game because of the grounded effect of the Miasma. Well, I do want to remind you of what I just said about LPL versus LCK. I mean, it may have taken about nine minutes this time around, but things have certainly gone back in the favor of NA. We do now have a slight gold advantage by about 800, but what's really important is the fact that Doublelift has clawed back what was a massive deficit on the bottom side of the map. Still a lot of pressure here from Team Ice, but NA feeling a whole lot better after those kills being picked up because 2-0-2 now on the Jin. Going to be pretty comfortable, just needs to sit back. It's a good spot to be in, and for Doublelift, you know, it's going to revolve around these skirmishes early on. We've already kind of recognized that it's very difficult for Jin to push back Uzi and Mata uh, as they're pushing down on that bottom tower. So he has to kind of find those safe spots that we were talking about. Bjergsen has Wayless caught potentially again. Yeah, has to flash himself over the wall. Oh, there's the shockwave under Rainover as clear love. Hoping a combo. Yep. Gonna quite find it. And of course, no shockwave for the Kitty Cat. Yeah, Love just launches his way out of the brush. All burn, so that diminishes a lot of pressure, unfortunately, for Ice. The lumbering Nautilus, not gonna quite find too much. Big Daddy, go back towards the top side of the map. Ah, Uzi didn't play catch the traps off completely. Yeah. Still, though, trying to get as much control as possible in this bottom side. What's interesting is that control ward has lasted for so long in the tri brush, and that's what's basically keeping the turret alive is the fact that that control ward exists because there's these large minion waves that they're able to push to the turret, but then they're not willing to actually get the turret harassed off because they don't have control of the tri brush, which will tell them when the game will be coming. 
Oh, speaking of ganks coming, a couple of seconds away perhaps. Look at Rainover's pathing Bjergsen coming down, but he is spotted on a ward, so look at how much respect this time Uzi and Mata give over to the NALCS. They say, okay, we see you coming a mile off. We're going to take a full step back in lane so that we don't get caught. So, you know, one of those pivotal moments where the Rift Scuttle Vision without that ward perhaps could have been a different story, but the respect now being given after being punished before. That was nicely done, especially with Clear Love on the top side of the map was taking his red buff there as well. Now Rift Scuttler is going to go down for the Rengar. Now looking potentially at impact. Is it about half health? The wet Noodle Fight is certainly yeah. on to utilize that overused term. However, very relevant in this case. The no ultimate walk into lane gank while the enemy takes the Drake. Uh, <laughs> An underutilized move, one would say. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Not, not very effective right there. We'll see how it pays off. <laughs> ah, the other team got you. Ah, oh, damn it. Hero would have thought that it would have been great. He's just used to playing Evelyn, okay? He's like, I can just get all the way into lane. I don't need any ultimates or anything, but... Oh, uh, with the delayed effectiveness lane. of this gank. <laughs> no, it's still not working. <laughs> well, might, might spell some damage on the turret, Jack. Come on, stay positive. I thought you were unbiased. Buddy. That, was, that was still quite optimistic with the delayed uh, effectiveness looking for it. Yuk has his ult, has flash. Has hey, listen, man. <laughs> it was Rainover showed us NA Rengar yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what CN Rengar looks like today. Well, it looks all right. Never know. You know one, one, one. It's, it's been fine. okay so far. Otherwise, okay. A little yeah, bit of hit, a little bit of miss. There's a reason we don't play it in Europe. That's all I'm going to say. You don't ever want to see that happen. No, we certainly didn't play it in OCE either. Right. Bit of a different story. Well, let's have a look towards the top side of the map. It's clear love. Looking for he's a gank on this time. Impact. Yeah, he's going to launch himself on top Here of the but only gets one of the knockups. Flashes the bowler strike, and now the Riptide's there, but Mouse just punts him back. Clear love looking for the damage. He's pretty tanky, but they kill him before the dredge line comes in. Oh, bot side yep. though. This is still a beneficial trade for the NALCS. They get first tower on the bottom side, despite being against the Caitlyn and the, the Karma. They push them all the way out of lane. Yeah. Just capitalize. And that really all stems from the overdive that the LPL did earlier because they had total control that lane up until that point. I do oh, want to credit. Yeah. Ooh, I do want to credit yeah. Mouse to flash in front of Impact right there because you'd think it might be wasteful because you could slow him with Q anyways. But you're just making sure Impact couldn't escape with the dredge line. Yeah, it was cute. Not able to go. grab this top out of stop him. Ghosting in, so he wants to take this. He's coming through as well. Impact's on his oh, oh, just the end. Woo. That was stunning, exactly right. Now Impact looking to try and close off Mouse, and this is exactly what he did to him. Now the tables have turned as Mouse, the last twin fan, that's going to get the double kill for Bjergsen. Uh -oh. There's a crescendo in the mid lane as well, and Whalers evaporates, and LPL just going bust. Yeah, and a way faster on the moves right there. They've taken the duo lane turret, so the mid lane roams top and the bottom lane roams mid. They just shifted everyone up yeah. to that side of the map. They went all over. They had three three kills and maybe two turrets. And again, it stems from the LPL kind of over pushing. Look at the top tower health. You can even see it on the minimap. They were trying to just shove everything back and make sure that they could get the lane in a position that when they eventually go to it, it's like one hit and the tower is gone. And that means they stayed too late. The roam came up, the TP came out, and it was an easy pick off on the top side. I just want to say, LPL does the early game really well. You just wait till we're good at the rest of the game as well. It's going to be huge. Unfortunately, it's just not quite working out. 3,000 gold now the lead for the NALCS, just with far more crisp movements. But is this a scaling conversation that we need to have now? I mean, Oriana, ah. Caitlyn, you know, late Maokai game. as well. The late Just game conversation. We're, we're strapping in the late game, boys. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, when you compare these team compositions, they're pretty close as far as overall scale. They got the super tanks in the top lane. Rengar, maybe you would say would scale, but that's only if the game becomes chaotic. If you're thinking about straight up team fights, the AD Rengar actually just kind of blows up. Uh, the Cassiopeia also is a better DPS character against the Maokai, but that's canceled out with Caitlyn being better DPS. Oh, good oh. flash. Yeah, very cute little flash. Playlist is uh, trying to throw the ball around and does do so effectively. Grabs the shutdown. It was a good, that was a very vintage double lift flash. He's like, I'm going to flash this shockwave. Look at my mechanics. What now? <laughs> yeah. I, I have no well. response. It's the battle of the two players that love being alone in a side lane in the wrong <laughs> position as well. I mean, Whalers from the LPL, always known for that. Beautiful. We saw it yesterday. And uh, double lift as well, I mean, in his past, has been one to utilize the side lane farm. Yeah, he's going for it. Still down in CS. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> It's coming up on Christmas, you know? I mean, thought that counts is very relevant at this stage. Oh, well, clearly, his thought right now is that he wants Impact, uh, who does have his ultimate, but no flash. But is fairly tanky. 
at this point. So we'll see whether Maus and Clearlove again can punish Impact. But. Yeah. AD Rengar thrives on killing squishies. I've been very surprised to see him visiting the tankiest player on the map repeatedly in this yeah. game. When Aphromoo was losing 75% of his health from like two Rengar spells earlier, very surprised that he hasn't been going for more plays and just trying to kill the support. This time though, I like the fact that they don't just go for it because they see Uzi and Mata coming up to the top side, Impact backs away and while they had set that tower up to be killed yeah. earlier, they finally get an objective yeah. from it as well. So second tower of the game for the LPL. Important that they go up there to get the turret. Just overall commenting on the surprise of how much he's been up there. Yep. Uzi now, you can see on your screen with a variety bucket of items. Looking for that hurricane as well as the Infinity Edge and buying as much of both of them at the same time as he possibly can. I certainly like that. On the other side, it is going to be double if finishing off his Essence Reaver as well as his Zeal for a heck of a lot more cooldown reduction at this point in time. Turn four could come through at any moment. Oh, whoa! Last cone is going to deliver Afro move yeah. to the right spot. <laughs> Double yeah. didn't quite manage to make it. Oh man, you always want to punish Afro move. He plays so far forward and oftentimes does get burned for, but not this time. Oh dear. We love taking so much damage. Good man protects. Bjergsen takes a lot from that dissonance. Uzi shoots one over. But Rainover's going to pick that one up. Hold up to find the kill or anything like that. Mouse still underneath his turret and he's going to be okay. We're in one of these situations where both teams are like, okay, we're gonna put five people up there. And it's probably gonna be one of the ones where everyone just backs away. You, see, you don't yeah. wanna just head on engage into either of these teams. So we'll see whether NALCS can do anything with it. Get some vision control on the top side, perhaps. Yeah, you always have to look at who has the other ways pushing when they need this five and five, because that team almost always transitions it into an advantage afterwards. Since when they do move back down, Watch this, Ice actually has to push out some of these mini waves, and that means Fire can get some of the wards in the Drake area. The cost of this, though, is they didn't chop, whereas everyone on Ice did. So if Ice does actually get a clean 5v5 fight, they have an edge, it's just really hard to do without the vision control or the vision. Fire's gonna utilize that time. Grab himself oh, all the right? TPs are coming through. Hang on, yeah, Uzi's Uzi. trapping already. In a heck of a lot of yeah. trouble. Does throw down a trap as clear of. Looking to get himself in position. We get spotted out by Aphromoo. Impact right on the front line as Mata looks to be the one caught out and is going to die. Impact grabs that kill. Wayless with a fair bit of damage there as he throws his ball around. And Mouse is right in the back line of this fight. Good curtain call from Double Lift. But Uzi in a great position as well at the back of this fight. Impact has to flash his way out as clear of wants to get into it. Two man shockwave there for Wayless as Aphromoo in so much trouble. Mouse grabs that kill, flashes out. It's a good stun on a clear love though, and Rainover gonna grab that kill. Uzi somehow Ooh. snagged by that dredge line. That was ridiculous as Wayless is just throwing the ball everywhere to keep his team alive. And we got to see the extremes of that Ooh. fight with the tanks just eating damage from absolutely everyone and how long it takes Cassiopeia Jin to cut through a tank versus how long it takes Oriana Caitlyn to cut through a tank. And this time, Uzi actually did get a lot of damage out of the fight and he's not even in his super strong point. He's in his mid game dip. It's a good TP position out of Uzi right into the back of this fight. They catch Mata, take him out before he can really have an impact because the LPL squad has split up on two sides. And now they're up against the numbers advantage that Maus, he can tank a lot of damage for sure, but you see Impact doing the same, holding Wayless and Uzi back. The ultimate to stop more damage coming out of Oriana, and now the Shockwave ended up coming through. Yeah, and also watch Wayless in the extension of this fight, keeping the ball right in that choke point and kind of stopping anyone from fire for following up on Impact's hook onto Uzi, so that completely pushes them back on this fight. Yes, they did lose the fight, but Wayless played it very well. Yeah, and this is what Wayless is known for as well. He was more of a DPS Oriana player, you know, known for being able to move his ball to the right positions in a team fight, knows exactly how to utilize the champion to get the most damage out in a really effective way that's not necessarily no noticeable because it's really subtle in the way that he utilizes all of the different uh, abilities that uh, Oriana has. Yeah, and also while most people go Rylize in their Oriana build after Relanomicon, even last year before Rylize was super popular and still it looks like Willis is going for Ludens. So yeah. you're faster, you're way squishier, but you also do a bunch more damage. His mid-game power spike is about as big as it gets when you go Sorcerer Shoes, Morel, and Omicron Luden. So he's absolutely go going to be going for some one-shots on either Afro or Double It with that build. And if they end up somehow getting the Maokai with the ball through onto someone like Bjergsen, which rarely will happen with this team setup, that could be, you know, catastrophic for the NALCS team. If they just get shockwaved off the map from their carries, that's pretty much the end of that fight because Uzi will end up cleaning it up. So despite looking like the LPL are fairly far behind on kills with having half of it, they still are in this game, certainly. But Wayless, yeah. he's in a lot of trouble in mid lane. Yeah. Potentially, as three bullets go in, make that four as Wayless even gets stunned at the end. He's going to survive as Aphromoo 
Doesn't offer any extra damage. Yeah, really no one else to come through. Yeah. Ended every single but shot. But the skill shots. Nailed it, that's fine. Send All the four message. Of them. What it did, however, is drag the LPL team into the mid lane, and now Bjergsen True. pushes through with Reyno from the top side. So, kind of not sure whether it was the intended uh, play when they end up catching Wayless in the middle lane. Looking Let's like go. Good play. There it is. <laughs> Just the Q's as well. Okay. Not this time. Not this time. Yeah. A lot of messages. He was a little so far ahead of the rest of his team. Decided, nope, don't want this one. But at least he used it. Exactly. Marta, not going to get stunned by the Deadly Flourish, but does. Uh, Move around, at least get slowed by the Song of Celerity power cord. And as we kind of sweep through the top side of the jungle, you can see the vision control as well for the NALCS. Uh, very good. Uh, they got two side stones as well, so on top of that, they're yeah. able to maintain a lot of vision. Rek'Sai, one of the few junglers that still can do that, that isn't Lee Sin, when you look at the, how the very meta true. plays out. You see an incredibly low amount of side stones, especially on the new season, mainly because most of the new season has been seen in solo queue, and no one builds that <laughs> stuff in solo queue on the jungle. In pro play, even though, Rainover, one of the first to do that this whole tournament. Yeah, exactly. It's normally that Titanic Hydra setup, where you're looking for a little bit more damage. Oh, double shockwave. Yeah, shockwave, yeah, impacted rain over. The tanky members do get knocked around as Mouse makes his way in at a very good position. Wayless continues to get the damage down. Uzi there as well. But looks like NALCS don't want the fight and do move away successfully. Yeah, a little bit of a weird fight there because the two main damage dealers really on these teams is Uzi for the repeatable damage on Caitlyn and Cassiopeia for the repeatable damage uh, with Bjergsen. And neither of them were there that fight, so no one could kill the pit. Yeah, and once again, the curtain call comes in. Wayless just happy to tank him all up as Impact gets his face into the fight. Takes a lot of damage, gets himself out with the flash. Yeah, he missed his dredge line, so he couldn't jump out on that. Had to burn the flash in the fort. And Wayless is having so much thrown at him time and time again. Luckily, he was able to flash, as you were talking about, before that grounded came through. But they can never really close the distance for any kind of Cassiopeia ults, unless the LPL team are diving right in. So that's one area that Bjergsen himself has to be fairly careful about, is if he pushes himself forward in a fight, Mouse is going to come straight through uh, and try and pick him up. Now Clulub's going to clear out. His jungle towards the top side, pretty empty as far as the bottom side of it is concerned. And Uzi back into the mid lane to try and shove this one through. Still a few turrets left available here for Team Ice. To try and take down. Three to two. In fact, that score line. So still looking for that mid lane outer turret. Not going to get it this time, though. There's a lot of defense available from Double at Dinaferman. Absolutely. And even though it is the 3,000 gold lead for NA, watch for Uzi when he's able to get his second zeal item in. The fact that he will have double shield as well as really the sweet spot for the yep. Caitlyn power spike. It might have to wait until Last Whisper because of the massive tank line on fire, but if he's able to do that, like that's where LPL can kind of neutralize that gold lead because that requires fire to have really good like backline access and they have a very good tank line, but they have almost no dive that can actually threaten the double shield of Caitlyn. So it's actually looking decent for the LPL as long as they don't lose uh, before Uzi gets to those items. Yeah, and look, I get it. I get scared of these questions, questions about items especially. But uh, that's a warrior enchantment picked up for Rainover on the Rek'Sai, which it is. is interesting, right? Yeah. It's what he used to do uh, when he was carrying all the Rek'Sai games back in Fnatic when they had that undefeated split. So it's a very Rainover thing to do. <laughs> I don't necessarily think it's bad. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, impact doing impact things though. Massive teleport into the back line. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Crescendo, Rainover grabs the first kill and it's on to Wayless as Uzi completely off on his own mouse, tanking up the curtain call. Uzi grabs the last bullet there is now mouse. Oh god, they just yeah. cut the tree down. It is going to be the double picked up for exactly the man we were talking about just before. Take one for the team, mouse just allows Uzi to escape right there, but that's the type of big fight that. NA really wanted. They combat all their CC just right. And now they're going for Baron. Clear loves the other side of the map, almost out of health as well. No flash to look for any kind of trade. He's been spotted out in a wood. They know that there is no way of stopping the NA LCS squad from doing this. So they're just going to take themselves an ocean break, and that is never going to be a worthwhile trade. The classic yeah. consolation of ocean break. Not bad. Well, we were talking about, you know, impact doing impact things gets right into that fight. Gets the knock knock up off the dredge line on multiple people and absolutely just hits you know the perfect crescendo yeah. for the moment. I, I feel like because Uzi was in the jungle, Ice walked towards the teleport. They had a path to run through the river and kind of delay the fight, but they chose not to take that. Instead, they kind of ran straight into the Nautilus, who knocked up everyone, allowed the CC chain to happen, and then Mouse was really just taking hits so the rest of them could run away. Just seems all about these choke points. Yeah. 
Absolutely fantastic crescendo there from Aphromoo. Yeah, I do have a minor point about the Ocean Drake. I still think it was the right call for any to take uh, the Baron, but Sona with Ocean Drake is <laughs> almost kind of like Jin with Infernal Drake, where it's just so much better on that champion than it is on anyone else. Sona, especially with the incredible cooldown reduction she can get, it's up to like 60 or 70% later in the game when you rank up crescendo, is pretty much only gated by Mana. Otherwise, she can just heal everyone to full. So if you're able to get one or two Ocean Drakes, it almost just is multiplicative in its effectiveness when yeah. compared to other champions. It's okay, Jad, don't worry. Next Drake, it's Ocean. They can get it for Sona. No hey. need to panic, we'll get one. But double Ocean is even better. He's <laughs> <laughs> never pleased with Jad. High expectations. Exactly right, it's good. Keeping us honest. Ooh. Man Dissonance does a heck of a lot of damage. That's the Lizzie's Echo for you, gentlemen. Yeah, likely gonna get something like a Void Staff next for a little bit of extra penetration. Maybe the Abyssal, but yeah, you see the short range. Mouse goes in, they're just straight in there, doesn't waste uh, any time. Gets Dredge Line back as well as Uzi's gonna get knocked up. Redemption is in to try and heal up the members of the LPL as Curtain Call goes down, but this turret should follow as well. Ooh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 massive damage on Afro Movement. Impact is able to tank that one up. It is gonna be double and taking down oh. the Oriana. It's now awesome. NA just tearing them up. Clearlove's dead, Mouse is dead as well. Uzi, I, I think he was there for a second, but he just goes down and Mata's gonna spell the triple kill. That's the double left. That's, That's the game. That's a clean ace with the Baron buff, totally decimating the LPL in that last fight. They're gonna win pre-30 minutes. Just unbelievable play from the NALCS. First Nexus are down, second as well, and this puts Fire 100 points in the lead at the end of the day and gives Double Lift the revenge that he needed against <laughs> Mata and Uzi. I'm sure he would gladly trade this all star single game victory <laughs> for the world's game, but it feels a little bit nice, I'm sure, to have yeah. a victory over Uzi and Mata, although the last laugh still goes over to the LPL. Good game all around, able to close it out, must feel Pretty good. You can oh, yeah. see how much it meant to double lift and Aphromoo there. I mean, we've heard throughout so many worlds how much Uzi double lift that relationship and everything that goes with it means. And, you know, we, we look at how this game played out, and after yesterday's performance against LMS, where we criticized the NALCS for not playing as a team, this game was a lot better on the team play. They reacted very well to the movements on the map yeah. out of the LPL All Stars and punished them heavily on two or three big plays. Yeah, I was so happy to see Rain over on Rek'Sai. You can yeah. just see the comfort level goes up tenfold when he's on a champion he's played so much of. And also, credit to these guys, it's about the competition and the fun. Both playing their final regional clash as far as these 5v5 of the year, pretty much, because this is the All Star. And huge smiles on everyone's face as well. That's the fantastic part.